So first of all, let's define set. Um, a set is, I should write a set is a, I'll stop writing cursive, well defined uh, collection or group. I, I would like to say set typically, but that's using the word in the definition. You're not supposed to do that, right? So a set is a well-defined collection of objects. And when I say objects, it doesn't have to be math oriented. For instance, it could be, I mean, think about when we're talking about probability and uh, a set of objects could be like your, um, your new math class, the students, students in your new math class, in your new math class. And I, that doesn't even look like the word class, but anyway. Um, uh, but of course, uh, for us, most of the time we're dealing with um, numbers. So let's talk about uh, the set, a set. Uh, for what, three, four, five. So if we use this as a set, um, it has how many members or how many elements? Elements or members are the individual items that are in there. This one has three elements or three members. Typically, more mathy speak is using the word elements, I believe. And uh, note that the curly braces, we have curly braces here. These curly braces are what we would normally use for set notation. So that helps define as a set, as opposed to like uh, parentheses two, three, that's not a set of two, three, that's, that's typically an ordinate pair. Or there's other ways that we use the parentheses as notation. Um, but in this particular case, these curly braces mean a set of elements and the elements in this set are three, four, five. We can also define the set and refer to it as just a letter. For instance, we could say that A is equal, is the set of the numbers three, four, and five, okay? But uh, uh, imagine I wanted to include all of the numbers, let's say all of the integer, integers between zero, excuse me, all the integers between one and 10 inclusive, when I say inclusive, meaning also including 1 and 10. I could write the set B is equivalent to or made up of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But I could also do the following. B is the set of numbers, X, and this vertical line means such that X is an integer, and I will just use this notation, and we'll talk about that notation. It's like a cur it's like a curvy E, or like a C with uh, this sticking out. And then I'm gonna write this weird Z, and that means X is in the set of integers where X is greater than one, excuse me, greater than zero and less than 11. Wouldn't that also be a way to write that set of values. So this may in fact be shorter to write out than this. Because imagine if I was thinking about x is less than 73 and greater than zero, then I would write out 72 numbers. That's crazy. I'd rather write it this way. So um, just a different way to write it. So now let's talk about what this piece of notation means. This means in this case, this means x is in the set of numbers that is integers. z, like that, is integers, just like r, like that, is all the real numbers. So that's kind of a like a block z. Uh, the way I draw it looks like that. And so the textbooks kind of do it like that if it's more formal, just like the r actually has these little serifs on them. They have these little tips. So this is like a box or a block, block lettering as they call it. So the lazy way for me to do it is this, or I've seen people do it like this, and it doesn't matter. Uh, so in other words, let's go back to that set A. Remember set A was three, four, five. So four is in three, four, five. Or because I'm lazy and I don't want to write this out all the time, and I've defined the set to be A, I can say that four is in A. Okay. 
So uh, another way to use that symbol is to say the following, since A is 3, 4, 5, 8 is not in A, because it's not an element that's in, in the set A. Now, two sets are equal, are equal if they are the same. That's pretty easy. When I say same, I mean consist of the same elements. So 5, 6, and 7 is equal to 6, 5, 7, which is also equal to 7, 6, 5, which is equal to blah, blah, blah. Because the order does not matter. These elements still exist in the set. So think about I had three people, um, uh, Bob, Joe, and Frank, uh, it doesn't matter how they're standing or where they're standing. If they are in my set, they're in my set. So um, if it's if the set is cons consists of the same elements, the sets are equal. Uh, to make a set not equal, all you have to do is have an element that does not exist in both. So for instance, uh, 5, 6, and 7. But if I put the number 9 in there, then my sets are no longer equal, right? Okay, easy enough, I hope. Now, what if I want a set to, oh, I already talked about that. I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. Um, then we have another couple symbols here. Here's the one that we would probably think about first. It's like a, a curvy C or a sideways U with a line underneath. And so they're the same symbol as this U, this big giant capital, uh, bl almost blocky U, or it's uh, inverse, it's flipped over upside down or whatever you call it. Um, these are the same except they're kind of rotated just 90 degrees or they're sideways, however you want to think of it. So this one means that, for instance, A is a subset of B. So this is subset. Which means that A is going to contain, gonna contain some or all of the elements in B. Some or all the elements in B. Okay, so for instance, if A, like before, was 3, 4, and 5. Oops, 5. And I'm going to have to change the definition of B from previous. I'm not going to use the, the same set B before. Um, 3, 4, 5 is the subset of a set that consists of the elements 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7. Notice how the 3, 4, 5 are right there, and they are part of this set, okay? It could also be that A, or some set, having nothing to, be with, having to do with A, was 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7. That set is also a subset of 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. In the, at this level of math, that really doesn't have great practical use for, for you guys. Um, if you continue on in your math studies later on in your life, it may uh, make more sense to have these kinds of ideas in your head. So every set, set has subsets. Every set. Even the set that is that. Because... Every, sub, every set has at least two subsets, and so two subsets always of every set is itself and the null set. And when I say null set, I mean uh, an empty set. So that's usually denoted with a big circular O or zero. It's not a zero or an O because it's a circle and they put this line through it and that is the null set. Which means there's nothing in it. It's an empty set. So the null set or it can be itself. So A is always a subset of itself and the, and the null set is always a subset of any set. That's why this equal part is here to allow those to be uh, subsets of each, of each other. It has to go to higher level math, but that's correct. Def, uh, define Definition wise, that's correct. The other symbols that are related to that is, again, this is subset. This is 
the same idea except it's the other direction. And this is, in, as well as this, this is proper subset. So when I say something is a proper subset, let's say that um, E is a proper subset of F, that means that all elements in F, in E, are also in F, but F contains elements not in E. So in other words, there has to be extra elements in F that are not located in E. So in other words, if E is equal to the set uh, negative 1, 3, 5, and F is negative 2, negative 1, 3, 5, then E is a proper subset. It is contained in F, but F has more than E. If it was... Uh, if f was defined as this, let's go ahead and erase this. If f was defined as that, then it would be incorrect to state that E is a proper subset of f. It's more correct to say that E is a subset of f. In fact, E is equal to f. Okay? So it's just a fine, somewhat subtle or, uh, yeah, subtle or nuanced difference. And it, it can inform us as well, but at this level, it's not going to be that big a deal. Uh, other than getting correct symbology on the in math in uh, in the in the software, uh, where do I want to go from here? Okay, so uh, let's say that I had a set G, and it was defined as uh, one, two, three. Okay, how many subsets? does G have? Because that'll be a question that comes up. Now, how many subsets? Well, first of all, G can have the subset that is the null set. It can have a subset that is equivalent to G. So now we already have two, right? Can it also have the set one as a subset? Yes. So two and three. But can it also have one comma two? And then let me ask you this question and think about it a little bit. 2 comma 1. And I hope that you would say, well, no, not so much because this is not an additional subset because those that's equal to that. All right? So let's go back to listing. I can also have 1 comma 3. And then if I go 2 comma 1, that's that guy again. 2 comma 3, that's new. And then I have... The one set that we talked about, so how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you could do that every time, but what if I told you this? H was the set one, two, three, 17, 18, uh, you know, and it was just, you know, there's 18 values. You're gonna do this thing and map them all out? No! What we want to do is find a shortcut, and if you were to do, have like a single element, a two element set, and find its subsets, a three element set, find its subsets, four element sets, I, I would think that you'd be able to find a pattern, and that pattern basically is the uh, number of subsets is equal to 2 to the n, where n is equal to the number of elements. So when it's, for instance, G had three elements. So that means that since G, G had three elements, the number of subsets is equal to two cubed, or two times two times two, which is equal to eight. And what did we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight subsets. So if we go back to H, how many does H have? Uh, number of subsets of H, and I'm an idiot because I didn't do this math ahead of time, would be 2 to the 18th. And you could probably just jam that in your calculator as 2 caret 18 and figure out some value. I'll leave that to you. 
Uh, but, 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 but then we got to talk about some um, some other notation things having to do that's it's somewhat related to Venn diagrams. So let's say that uh, when we talk about sets and we start going driving towards probability, we have this thing called the universe, and we can define the universe to be whatever we want it to be. So we could say it's all positive integers. Okay. Um, but we could do whatever we wanted here. So I'm going to define the universe to be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay? And I'm going to say set A is defined as 7 and 8. I'm going to say set B is defined as 10 and 11. So there's, there are a number of things here. When I say A union B, I mean all the elements in A and all the elements in B put together to be a singular set. So the A union B is going to be A plus those elements in B. So A union B. A intersect B are the values that overlap in these two. And maybe I should have chosen a different set. Like what if we do this instead? Uh, what if we do this? Uh, let's erase this. Oh, no, that's going to be okay. Um, what if we also include 10 in A? So the intersection of these two is the, is the set of values where these two overlap or that there are any elements that are the same between them. So the union is equivalent to just the element 10. I'm sorry, not the union. The intersection is comprised of just the element that they both contain or have in common which is 10. Now there are the two more ideas. The complement of A are those values in the universe that are not in A. So that would be 9 and 11. Am I making sense? 7 is in the universe, excuse me, 7 is in the universe, 8, 9, 10, 11 are all in the universe, but 7 is in A, 8 is in A, and 10 is in A. What values in the universe are not in A? 9 and 11. What would be the complement of B? Hit pause. So the complement of B would be whatever's not in B, which then would be 7, 8, 9, but 10 and 11, 10 and 11 are in fact, are, are in fact are in B. So the complement of B is this. So then we can do crazy things like this. A union complement B. So A union complement B is going to be A, which was uh, 7, 8, 10, 7, 8, 10, 7, 8, 10. And then the complement of B was 7, 8, 9. So the union of those two would be this one plus A and then whatever those elements are. If I asked for what's the uh, intersection of what do I want to do here? Oh, I guess I could do it that way. Intersection of A with A. I think that would be a fairly intuitive response. If these are the complements of each other, then they can't have any overlap. So this would be the null set. All right? I think that's predominantly what we're talking about when we when we're talking about sets. All right?